and welcome back to my Ultimate Zodiac Showdown series. I know it's been quite a while since I've recorded videos within this series, but here I am, here I am. We're on to the air signs now. No, I did not forget. I did not forget. I was just working on the chart ruler series, but yeah, we've done the water signs, we've done the fire signs, and we've done the earth signs. They've all been completed. And if you have not seen any of those videos yet, then please be sure to check them out, of course. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at Gemini versus Libra. I am going to be discussing the core differences between these two signs, okay? Followed by the compatibility whenever they are in a relationship. So we're gonna be looking at love, we're going to be looking at sex and we're going to be looking at anger. Please be sure to even comment down below any key differences that you happen to notice between these two signs and also feel free to share any experiences that you've had with either of them as well. Okay, so Gemini and Libra are both air signs. So here we have the element of air. The very substance that we breathe through our lungs so that we can really live on this planet. It's the element of air, in fact, that is the least tangible out of all the elements. Air? Where is it exactly? Do we see air? Do we physically see it with the naked eye? Sure, you can see the effects of air, you know, whenever the wind is going against a tree and you can see the tree just going way back, bending over, but you can't physically see it. Furthermore, with the element of air, it's the only element within the elements that doesn't have an animal representing it. And this really suggests that it's the element of air that represents man, because it is man that has the ability to evaluate situations, to think about different values and concepts and morals. Therefore, it's the logic and the reasoning of man that, um, that resulted in the naming of things of explaining things, of being able to say to somebody else, well, can you meet me at 8am at the coffee shop across the street from the pharmacy? That's a lot of words for one instruction, isn't it? Therefore, it's the air signs that represent thought, they represent logic, reason and rationale. And air also is all about communication and communicating those very, um, those very concepts and ideas and morals and values to other people. This is why the air signs are forever discussing new ideas and really bouncing them off one another. Also why air is a great deal to do with relationships because it's communication that really helps us to form relationships with other people. It's to do with all types and all forms of communicating resulting in us being able to relate to other people to say oh I really like this and have somebody else say oh my gosh I like that as well let's be best friends <laughs> but just like we can't physically see air we can't physically see thoughts either nor can we physically see words but you can see the effects of the thoughts and the words, just like we can see the effects of air. However, guys, when it does come to communicating and to explaining how we feel, feel to other people, well, that's when things get very interesting. <laughs> it's all well and good to sit with someone and have a mentally stimulating conversation about the new book that you've been reading, but thinking about how you feel. This can set the air sign's mind in a loop. Round and round they go. See, they want to be able to understand how they feel. So what they will do is they will think about why they think they think what they feel. Basically, they want to understand everything. There has to be some sort of explanation, some sort of thought out process of this is how I feel because X, Y, and Z, this is my understanding of it, right? I understand this, now I can sort of move on to the next thing. And this is also why so many air signs repress their emotions. They tend to repress their emotions because they think, well, I can't understand it. And what this does actually is this results in the air signs being a lot more sensitive <laughs> than they and other people may 
think. Ultimately guys, below their cool, breezy wit and intellect <sighs> is actually a person who possesses much emotional depth. An emotional depth that I personally think that water signs can really bring out of the air signs. Here we have a set of twins and a set of scales. Within mythology, twins can be shown as having special powers or deep bonds. It was in it was within Greek mythology that Castor and Pollux, they share a very strong bond. I did talk about Castor and Pollux within my Greek mythology behind the zodiac sign of Gemini, so if any of you Geminis or anybody else for that matter are interested in that uh, myth, then be sure to check out the video. Therefore, with Geminis, they are highly unpredictable. Their changeability is just off the charts, they love disguise, they're fascinated for a while but completely comfortable with moving on to the next thing or juggling so many things at once. The Geminis are really known as conductors. I see them as conductors and I also see them as jugglers and it's these qualities that make Gemini such playful and flexible people. They're always open to new experiences, to new places, new lifestyles, but more specifically, they're very open to new relationships. And it's all of these things that makes them excellent speakers, excellent learners, and excellent debaters. So when it does come to relationships and how they do communicate with other people, it's very quick, it's very witty, it's come on, come on, come on, what else, what else, is, what else have you got for me here? It's this notion of, well, what else am I going to learn from being in a relationship with you? What else can I learn from speaking with you? Oh, and the things that you're gonna learn from me as well. See, Geminis will meet somebody new with something interesting to say and see them as some sort of shiny new object. <laughs> Just like for years, it was believed that magpies would pick up shiny objects. So one twin, right, one twin will hold the shiny new object in their hand for a little bit. Then the other twin, the other twin will do the same. But the moment that the person gets too close or Gemini gets restless or they're no longer on the same wavelength, it's very common for both the twins to just drop the object. You can see so far in terms of Gemini, it's very quick, it's very changeable, very versatile. They're just constantly, they're constantly switching it up. They're, they'll switch up their appearance, they'll switch up their likes, their dislikes. They're not about stagnation. They're not about being slow. They're not about being closed. It's all air, right? Air. They're everywhere. It's mutable air. They're just flying around, morphing into this object, into that object. On the other hand, though, we have Libra, okay? The set of skills. Now, the thing about skills, okay, is that in ancient Egypt, there was the ceremony called the weighing of the heart. This was a symbolic ritual involving the weighing of a heart against a feather. The feather was a symbol of truth, order and justice, and the heart was considered to be the centre of thought, memory and emotion. If the heart was as light as the feather, the person would pass the test, and then they would enter into the afterlife. But if the heart was heavier, then Amut, the god with the crocodile head, <laughs> would move swiftly in and gobble up the person. This ritual was really symbolic for the person in concern living a life with a heart that was true, that was just. And if so, they would then enter into the afterlife. And if not, then Amut's stomach they would go. This is just the thing with Librans because the common struggle for a Libran would be that very balancing between their head and their heart. Head being because, well, they are air signs and their heart being because they are ruled by the planet Venus. So because they are ruled by Venus, um, out of all the air signs, really, these are the ones, Librans are the ones who want to form personal relationships with others. They are really quite romantic at heart and they want to have someone by their side. So it's their charming nature that they will put on that can help them get along with people quite easily. I do think that it's not so much because I've met a good few Libras within the past few months. I work with many of them. And I don't think it's so much that Librans can't make decisions. I think they're capable of making decisions when they are on their own. 
but it's more whenever they are around other people. This is when they sort of feel they have to adjust so that they can gain cooperation and that's when the indecision really occurs. And when it does come to the relationships, they're going to listen to all parties involved and go back and forth, weighing out the options, right? Weighing out the options on their skills because they want to harmonize with everyone. But there is the underlying motive. There's an underlying motive um, within the Librans that they, they want really every person or for the person in concern to be on their side. And so they might view relationships as a way to learn about themselves. They are going to be able to take lessons away from each relationship that they have formed. Thus, when it comes to how they do communicate, it's all about strategy and tactics so that fairness is always maintained. So the choice that they do make ultimately, it's the choice of harmony. That's the choice, you know? Their, their choice, their decision in itself is harmony. And so guys, when it does come to the differences between Gemini and Libra, whilst both of them do want to learn from other people, Gemini isn't so concerned with cooperating about fairness. The change for a Gemini isn't so that they want to cooperate with other people. But with Libra, um, they will put much of their energy and their time into the relationships. Gemini's as well will just zoom from one option to the next freely, able to hold on to many things at one given time. But with Libra, Libra might fear that an option that they do not choose will then be the one that is better. And lastly, I do see Gemini as being louder and faster when they communicate, whilst Libra is a lot more gentle, a lot more graceful and how they communicate. All right, so now with all of the differences out of the way, let's now look at the compatibility between these two signs. So we're gonna be looking at the compatibility whenever it comes to love, whenever it comes to sex, and whenever it comes to anger. We met at one of my girl's birthday parties. I have a lot of friends, okay? Let's just get that straight. I have a lot of friends, friends who are lively, friends who are fun, all, you know, friends who I can really bounce my jokes off. Yeah, they know that I'm good humor. Anyway, I'm at this party and I'm just talking to so many people. This one girl I'm talking to about travel, another girl I'm talking to about criminology, and another girl I'm talking to about music. It's great. I love talking to intelligent people, intelligent women. Women who have a lot to say, yes, but a woman who knows what she's talking about, it's even better. So I turn around and she's sitting right there She's just casually sipping on a glass of wine. She seems so poised and so refined. So of course I approach her. Yeah, I'm not afraid. I'm fine with approaching people. I'm good at that. I crack one of my jokes. Like, are you from Tennessee? Because you are the only 10 that I see. She thought it was funny. I know she did. And she did crack a little smirk. So we flirted with each other for a little bit. And oh my gosh, how she loves to flirt but I was not expecting the powerful mind that she has. She's creative and she's artistic at the same time. I love that mental connection that we have with each other and we are constantly bouncing ideas off one another. We both teach. I think we both teach one another and we both learn from each other as well. I do think that she gets frustrated by my tendency to be on the move more than she is. She likes consistency and I'm not an overly consistent person. I'm always changing my directions, my pursuits, my dislikes, my likes. I'm always switching my makeup brand up, the foods I like. It makes it quite difficult to buy a gift for me. Besides, anyway, she's more high maintenance than I am. She does tend to bring up the M word quite a bit though. And not, you know, not that I don't want to get married, not that I don't want to get married. It's just that when I'm ready, I'm ready and I, I don't know, I don't know when that will be, but I know that if I do decide, I'm gonna be marrying my best friend. What I do admire about her is her ability to diffuse a potential argument from happening. Because, you know, she already can sort of, I feel like she can already assess if the things are being too bent this way or too bent that way. It's as if she has this internal meter where she can assess where the breaking point is. And she's very good at compromising and sitting down with me to talk if there are any issues. So for example, she'll come over and say, hey, well, I wanna to talk to you. This is what I did. This is what you did. 
how do we meet in the middle? How do we compromise? She's not pushy about it. She's not forceful with me about it. And she really does focus on how we can come together, how we can get past whatever it is. However, however, I do notice how she can be whenever her anger might get the best of her. Now, she doesn't show it. She's not going to show it, but I can sort of already read from her body language anyway. I can tell, I can read the expressions on her face. I notice how she likes to play all innocent and uh, use her charm and her wit and her, her intelligence to sort of overlook the situation at hand sometimes. And I do think that the reason why she gets angry is because she tries so hard to cooperate with other people. It's as though she gets torn between taking action on the situation and being supportive of others. You know, forever seeking to work with others than against them and that I think can be a downfall for her sometimes. She doesn't want to seem unfair and she doesn't want to seem mean, but she needs to realize that we all have this aggression within us, so she's got to learn how to assert that aggression. You know, that's what I think. Sex for us starts in the mind. Seriously, seriously. As soon as we met, our brains have been making love with one another. Um, but yeah, she is uh, very sensual, she's very sexual, she's very seductive, and I've been madly curious about those things from the moment I lay eyes on her. And the way she talks dirty to me, oh how she can talk dirty to me. There's a lot of verbal foreplay and teasing. And I love that she likes to experiment and try new things with me as well. The thing though, the best thing though, is that she's able to communicate to me what satisfies her, what she likes, or something that she doesn't like or that bothers her. I know how many people just don't say, just don't say what they like or what they don't like. Oh yeah, I knew exactly what I was doing when I seduced her that night. I have a way with my words in order to get people onto my side. I'm one of the charming ones, darling. And I'm not just a pretty face. I use my wits and my brains. It's something that people don't really get about me. They see me at first and they make the move. And then they are surprised to see that actually I know a thing or ten. What I love about her is that she's like this textbook full of information and knowledge. I'm able to explore the world through her. I'm also able to learn more about myself through her. And she knows that she can learn more about herself through me as well. She's able to keep things fresh and exciting, but she's more likely to just pounce things on me last minute. She can wear me out sometimes. Though, whenever that does happen, I make her rub me a hot, steamy bath. <laughs> she usually does give in to my persuasion. I would say that I bring out the romance in her. She'll proclaim that she's not very romantic, but I know she is. I know she is. She wouldn't write me love letters if she wasn't romantic. She wouldn't buy me flowers if she wasn't romantic. I flatter her with my grace and she flatters me with her playfulness. <laughs> yes, there is a line with me. There is a line with me that I don't think a lot of people understand. But I notice when things get pushed too far or when they don't get pushed enough. And I know that she knows I know. It does certainly inspire me to be more spontaneous and fun. And she appreciates my willingness to try new things and to join in with her. And I do enjoy when she introduces me to her friends. I do the same with her, but you know how there's, there's, there's always that awkwardness whenever you meet somebody's friends, your partner, or your boyfriend, girlfriend's friends, and it's always very strange. But with meeting her friends, it was so easy. It was so easy. She just brought me straight in and said, well, this is Michael, this is my friend Hillary, and we just started hitting it off. Her friends are so friendly as well, and I do believe that a person's friend person's friends uh, can say a lot about that person, I think. We do both spend a lot of money, especially when we are together. <sighs> oh, she says I'm high maintenance, did she? We'll try telling that to the newest editions of books. 
that she keeps talking about. Not to mention all of the shoes and accessories that she really wants, because I know she wants them, because the thing with her is if she really likes something, she won't shut up about it. It is certainly a good thing that she has me as a partner, mm -hmm. because I know how to pick good quality items. Okay? There is no second-hand use items whenever she is with me. Oh boy. Whenever she gets angry, she does not hold fire from using her words. Let me tell you that right now. Those words can be like weapons. And she's so fast and it just comes out. Whatever is on her mind, really. That's it. That's it. It's too late. She, she can't hold it back. At least with me. I think a little bit before I talk. I have seen her get into these arguments with other people and just completely run through them. Just run through them. She'd actually make a great comedian as well, I think. Because uh, she, she's not only is she able to think fast like that, but she's also very, very witty. Her sarcastic jokes. Yeah, sarcasm can come out a lot, but I just see it as it is. You know, she she needs to get things off her chest. I do think I know how to camp her down. I do. I just, you know what I do? I just show her my hands. I show her my hands. She has a hand fetish, actually. She probably wouldn't say that, but she does. With her, I do notice that she gets bored very easily. She does get very bored easily in the bedroom, and that's why whenever we are together, there is a lot of experimentation, and we're able to spice it up a lot. I would say I'm a lot more sensual um, and seductive and she knows this and we're both able to talk in uh, our love language, our sex language with one another and I think that that keeps her coming back for more. Okay guys, so that concludes my video on Gemini versus Libra. Thank you kindly to my current subscribers for subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. And furthermore, if you would like to see more videos from me and you've not yet subscribed, then click the subscribe button. And I will be back with another video very, very soon. Bye!